Boris. What's new? Hi, Marta. Nothing special. How's your life? Same as always. You know, school, homework, all sorts of things. Okay. Let's not keep our beloved listeners waiting for the latest news. Let's not, because Bat English is a podcast for people who want to learn English in an easy and in the most effective way. All you need is to just listen for 10 to 15 minutes every day to our podcast. Let's start! And our first news is... Afghan parents sell children. For many years, Afghanistan depended on international help. But when the Taliban came to power last year, several countries stopped sending help. According to experts, more than half of Afghan people do not have enough food, and around 3.2 million children under 5 are facing malnutrition. Malnutrition means they do not get enough food, and it makes them weak and sick because they need vitamins and minerals from the food. Some families are so poor that they cannot buy food, so parents started to sell their own children. What can I say? It's terrible when society slips into the dark middle ages. Terrible and unacceptable. Our next news is French President Emmanuel Macron has been accused of using divisive, vulgar language after he used a slang term to say he wanted to make life difficult for unvaccinated people. I really want to piss them off, and we'll carry on doing this to the end, he told the Parisian newspaper. Three months ahead of a presidential election, opponents of Mr. Macron said his words were unworthy of a president. MPs halted debate on a law... Wait, 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 MPs, it's member of parliament. Yes. Yes, I remember. MPs halted debate on a law bearing the unvaccinating from much of public life. Mandatory vaccinations are being introduced in several European countries, with Austria leading the way for over 14s from next month and Germany planning a similar move for adults. Italy's government, meanwhile, said on Wednesday it would make vaccination against COVID-19 compulsory from the 15th of February for everyone over the age of 50. In his interview with Le Parisien on Tuesday, Mr. Macron used the vulgar term émerdé to say how he wanted to stir up the unvaccinated. Wait a second, stir up? Stir up, what is it? It's like cheer up? Almost. The word stir means to move a spoon in a liquid so that you're mixing it. But to stir up means that you're almost causing someone to feel a very strong emotion. In this case, it would be anger. And it is not like cheer up because it is always used in a negative sense. Sense? He wanted to steer up the unvaccinated. He would not vaccinate by force the remaining 5 million who had not had a dose, but hoped to encourage people to get the vaccines by limiting as much as possible their access to activities in social life. How do you feel about this news? I don't know. I have mixed feelings because I was vaccinated twice and I have booster shot and I believe in medicine and I'm sure that the vaccine will help us. I think personally that I don't agree that he used the term emerde because it is very vulgar and 
not something worthy of the president of France. However, apart from that, I agree that for the safety of the public, it, sh it would be best that everyone gets vaccinated. And by making everything very hard for the people who aren't vaccinated, maybe we can achieve that. Okay, uh, we have one more news connected with COVID-19. <laughs> And vaccines. And vaccines. World number one tennis player Novak Djokovic has been denied entry to Australia over an issue with his visa. The player arrived in Melbourne on a Wednesday where authorities noticed a mistake with his application. Djokovic was due to play in the Australian Open after being exempted from vaccination rules. Stop, stop. Exempted to exempt. What is it? To exempt is free from any obligation or liability imposed on others. Mm -hmm. Proceed. He has been told he will be deported, but his lawyers have said they will challenge the decision, Australian media report. The tennis star has been quizzed in a room at Melbourne Airport for hours while his visa and exemption status were being investigated. Djokovic has not spoken about his vaccination status, but last year he said he was opposed to vaccination. In a statement, the Australian Border Force said Djokovic failed to provide appropriate evidence to meet the entry requirements to Australia, and his visa has been subsequently cancelled. For me, it's a news that Djokovic is anti-vaxxer. Anti I yes? did not know, yeah, he's <laughs> anti-vax. And interesting that there uh, exists some, some way of exemption for some person, and he was one of them. And I don't know why, but it didn't work in Australia. And world number one tennis player can't take part in Australia Open. It's ridiculous. I don't think so. It's sad, of course, but he's in this situation because he didn't get vaccinated and now he's facing the consequences. A Sicilian Mafia fugitive who was on the run for nearly 20 years was caught after being spotted on Google Street View. Uh, sorry. Fugitive is a person who runs from the law? Yes, a fugitive is usually a criminal who is trying to escape the law by being on the run while the police and the authorities are looking for them. Mm -hmm. Giacchino Gamino, 61, was tracked down to Galapagar in Spain, a town near Madrid, After a picture showed a man resembling him chatting outside a fruit shop. The photogram helped us photogram. Maybe because it's not photo, as we know, photogram that it's like because it's Google Street View. So it's many, many photos in one row. And maybe it's the term for, for this type of photographs. Photogram. Perhaps. <laughs> the photogram helps. Yeah, you know, it's first time when I try to explain you. <laughs> to you. <laughs> when I try to explain to you something about words, English words. <laughs> the photogram helped us to confirm the investigation we were developing in traditional ways said Nicolo Altiero, Deputy Director of Italy's Anti-Mafia Unit, DIA. Gamino was the boss of the Stida Mafia Group in Agrigento, Sicily, according to La Repubblica. 
The group is often rivals with the well-known Cosa Nostra Mafia. He was investigated in the 1980s by renowned anti-mafia judge Giovanni Falcone, later killed in a bomb attack. Camino managed to escape from Rose Rabibia prison in 2002 while a film was being made there, and a year later was sentenced to life for murder. He evaded capture ever since, and was apparently surprised his life in small town Spain had been uncovered. After his 17th December arrest, Gamino reportedly told police, How did you find me? I haven't phoned my family for 10 years. It's interesting how new technology is helping us in different helping, ways. <laughs> yes, in different ways. And it's another way to say that you can't be in safe or you can't be invisible in our days because just one of many Google Street cars with Google Street View come along with you and that's it. You that's can't do it. anything. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that he has been on the run for 20 years, which means that there are still enough people to keep on looking for criminals, even though they did something that was 20 or 10 or 15 years ago. With technology now, there are a lot of special applications that can analyze faces on photo, on video, and they can surf in internet automatically and look for specific people. Our last news of the day, Pope Francis has suggested people who choose to have pets over children are acting selfishly. The Pope's comments came as he was discussing parenthood during a general audience at the Vatican in Rome. Today we see a form of selfishness, he told the audience. We see that some people do not want to have a child. Sometimes they have one, and that's it. But they have dogs and cats that take the place of children. This may make people laugh, but it is a reality. The practice is a denial of a fatherhood and motherhood and diminishes us, takes away our humanity, he added. Pope Francis said that people who are unable to have children for biological reasons should consider adoption, urging people not to be afraid in embarking on parenthood. He also spoke of a demographic winter, possibly referring to countries with declining birth rates, in which we see that people do not want to have a children, or just one and no more. What are your thoughts about this? Me, father of three, very nice kids. Fantastic I, kids, I, am, I agree with Pope. Yes, I think that people who choose to have pets over children are acting selfishly. I don't think so personally, because not everyone should be a parent, I think. Not everyone has the capacity to be a good parent. So if you can't be a good parent, why have children that you may traumatize or that you may hurt just because you think you think you're being selfish? In fact, I think it's more selfish to have children when you think that you may not be capable of being a good parent. If, you're, if you can't be a good parent, then you shouldn't be a parent. I think it's not the reason why people don't have children. They don't think that they will be or not be a good parent. They don't think about this. I think they don't want to take responsibility. Cats and dogs are also an enormous responsibility. 
At least that's what I've been told every time that I've asked for a cat or a dog. It's a giant responsibility. It takes up a lot of money. It's a lot on you. So I don't think it, maybe for some people it's because they don't want responsibility like that. But on the other hand, isn't it better? Because that way, you, if you're forcing people who are irresponsible to have children, then their children won't turn out good. Because children are a product of their parents. If their parent is irresponsible and doesn't love them, be, just because they were forced to have a child, then maybe it would have been better if the child had different parents or just didn't have these parents. I think it's a long discussion. For a different day. <laughs> and yes, and we don't have time right now for this. But I agree with Bob Francis. I don't. Okay, so we are done for today. Yeah, this episode has to come to an end. We will be happy if you press the like button under this episode. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Also, you can ask questions and write comments under each episode. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.